We are awaiting a uh, cargo launch that will be taking place on Saturday. As mentioned, SpaceX 4 is scheduled to launch to the space station later this week, Saturday to be exact, carrying with it important research benefiting life on Earth as well as future exploration missions. Lori Meggs joins us now live from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where many of the scientists and investigators have arrived to see their payloads off. And Lori, I think you have a couple of them with you now, right? That's right. Things are getting really exciting here at Kennedy Space Center as we near launch day. Today we're going to talk about an experiment that features college students and fruit flies. Joining me now is Sharmila Bhattacharya. She is the principal investigator for the Ames Student Fruit Fly Experiment and Amy Gresser, the deputy project scientist. Thank you both for joining us today. First of all, Sharmila, tell us why we study fruit flies. Yeah, good question. So fruit flies are actually a very, very interesting and useful uh, little critter to, to use for science. Uh, people have been studying fruit flies and using them uh, to understand important questions for over 100 years. And um, so genetically, we know a lot about them. They're very well characterized. Um, they also, because they're so small, uh, in a small area, when you do a space flight experiment, you can get a lot, you can fly a lot of these uh, uh, little fruit flies. And so when you get the data back, you have a lot of information, uh, a lot of samples to do your studies. Um, Another thing that I think surprises a lot of people but, but is important to know is that fruit flies actually are very, when you look at their DNA and you compare it with DNA, say, of humans, uh, there's a lot of similarity. So when you look at the database, which has the collection of genes which are important for human function, so when you get any kind of an anomaly, then you, have, uh, you can show a human disease. When you look at that collection, and you compare it against the fruit fly DNA, you actually find more than 70% similarity. Wow. So more than 70% of those genes are, are similar. So, so there's a lot that you can use the fly uh, to do studies with, and then a lot you can understand about other more complex systems like the human being and how an astronaut would experience space flight. So what happens to them when they get to orbit? Yeah, so when, when they get to orbit, uh, they're in this unique environment with no gravity. And uh, so Amy will tell you in a second, we send up the flies and then they actually uh, will lay the eggs and you get another generation of flies coming out. You'll get hundreds of flies coming out somewhere around day 12, uh, 10 to 12. And then those adults can live for about six weeks. Wow. So, Amy, we've seen video of you working in the lab. You've been here, uh, I guess, a little over a week now getting these, these flies ready for flight. What have you been doing? Tell us about your work. So, we test extensively back in our lab at NASA Ames in California, but obviously there's the ch always the chance that something can go wrong during transport. So, we've been out here for about a week doing, rechecking all of our uh, space flight equipment and monitoring the development of the flies. And luckily, everything looks good, so we're to the point now where we're preparing for our final set of preparations before we get ready for launch. How many do you send and how is that decided? <laughs> Based on a lot of testing is how mm -hmm. it's decided and initially we'll send up 15 flies of each type in separate chambers within our fly habitat but within about two weeks we expect to have over 100 flies of each type as Sharmila said. So they wow. multiply very quickly in space which is one of the advantages of using flies. All right. Well, Sharmila, as the student mentor, we talked about this as a student experiment. Tell us about, I guess, the rewards for you and, and what, what it means to you when this really comes to fruition. Yes. Yeah, so in a way, Lori, it's uh, just like you have kids and you, you teach them and, and you watch them grow. Um, and then when they achieve something, you know, you have this sense of pride. Uh, it's very similar with students. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of students come through the lab and uh, the 12 that have worked to building this, making this payload happen, you know, built, designed, tested this payload. Uh, they've done an amazing job. They work very independently and for me it's that same sort of sense of pride when I see this payload come together, get ready to fly and all the hard work they put in um, and one student in particular, Chathan, who's here, uh, is helping Amy uh, put this, you know, he built the box uh, towards the end, he finalized it. Um, yeah, and we see him there. Yeah. Yes, we see him there. <laughs> and. Uh, 
uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a great feeling to see your students succeed and, and come together and work so nicely together as a team as well. Is this the first time we've studied something like this? Yes, indeed it is, uh, in that it's the first time we actually have this kind of a high definition video of fruit flies in space where we can look at their behavior. We'll um, also be doing some studies when the samples come back down on the ground post-flight. Uh, some, some of those types of analysis have been done before, but this high definition video uh, of the fruit flies and the setup that the students have put together is definitely the first time uh, that we've done this. All right, well, we look forward to it. An exciting piece of research there. Thank you both for joining us today. And that will do it for us from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We'll have more reports throughout the week. Now back to you, Amico, at Mission Control in Houston.